Welcome world to Life, Love and Wellness Global, a worldwide wellness movement. I am Reverend Sandy Rogers and as the creator of this historic event, it is my pleasure to welcome you. We come together to bring you this historic event. We have practitioners, uh, holistic, um, pr holistic practitioners, we have uh, medical doctors, we have spiritual individuals. This event is so lovingly dedicated to my mother, Mrs. Barbara Dean Brown. And my mother taught me like 40 plus years ago about the importance and the meaning behind herbs. And she would always say, we don't know what they putting in those pills. So you better not, you know, get hooked on prescription drugs. And so we listened to mom, but not all of us paid attention. My sister, bless her heart, uh, was diagnosed recently thereafter with asthma and uh, she was prescribed prednisone which is a very powerful steroid and my sister actually got hooked on steroids like someone out on the street kind of hooked you know like on heroin or crack or something like that and so my mom and my sister are both on the other side living in the other dimension but they're upholding me and this is dedicated to their memory. So we don't want to come and uh, make you change your mind about what you're doing. We just want to provide information to you, something different so that you have options to, to choose from so that you're not stuck because the, uh, the environment that we now live in, the fast foods, the toxins in the air that we breathe and in the water that we drink and the processed foods and all of that is causing havoc on this precious body temple. So God created our bodies to heal themselves, but they can only heal themselves when they're fed and they're nourished and they're stress free. And so the 60 uh, or so or more uh, experts that we have are bringing you this worldwide wellness movement in an attempt to share their testimonies and their information with you. So we have uh, from age 14 on up. I don't even know what the oldest age is. I think 88 uh, or something. So you see that's a wide range of knowledge that we're bringing you. And so we hope that you come and that you get all the knowledge that you need to affect a positive change on your life and uh, share this with others. Uh, it's free, it's online, and so we're just so thankful that you decided to be a part of our listening community, the viewing community, and we certainly appreciate you for giving us your time of day and your energy and your efforts to being uh, with us and to being a part of this historic event. We have pulled together people of color for you, by you, right? So we want to make sure that you understand that we too, melanated people, people with color, can enjoy, practice, and participate in some of these modalities that others have been doing for centuries and that is pretty new to our community. So we talk about Qigong, we talk about meditation, yoga, um, spiritual work from a different perspective than religion. So we talk about the spirituality aspect. We talk about abuse in the families. We talk about all kinds of subject because, subjects because we know that in our communities there are layers and layers and layers and layers of stuff that we never talk about that's causing uh, a negative effect on our bodies and its healing process. So we address it, whatever it is, and we hope that you will benefit from the many experts that we have and that you walk away with lots of knowledge and not lots of new information and that you become fully empowered to share information with others. So thank you for being with us. We love you and we bless you. And we look forward to doing this again, but thanks for being here with the first one. We appreciate you.
thank you so much for having me on your program, Reverend Sandy. Uh, my name's Robert Wadley, and I'm uh, originally from Atlanta, but I moved here into uh, Hillsboro, North Carolina a couple of years ago after I uh, was recently laid off from uh, corporate America. And um, my story really begins uh, a while back. In uh, 2010, I was diagnosed with uh, stage four colon cancer. And I went through the traditional chemo and radiation therapies to address that, you know, Western uh, medicine. And then uh, a friend of mine told me about the uh, Raw Foods Institute in Atlanta, which is uh, founded by Brenda Cobb. Uh, and I went through their program. They had a, uh, I believe it was a 10-day program that I went through. And it actually brought me back to life after I uh, went through that chemo and radiation. Uh, some days I couldn't get out of bed because they had me on these uh, opiates. And, uh, you know, I couldn't really do too much during the day. But after changing my diet, eating a more plant-based diet, uh, gave my body what it needed to heal itself and I was able to actually return to work and uh, you know regain my uh, productivity so I, uh, I, 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 I credit that all to uh, diet change so I'm a proponent uh, right now I do uh, lectures and talks on how to increase uh, a more plant-based diet in your lifestyle so that you can uh, you know, your body can basically heal itself and you can get off some of those medications they have you on because nowadays the doctors are prescribed one medication for one symptom and that's all they're doing is treating the symptom but then the pill they give you has so many different side effects they have to give you another pill to address those. So some uh, clients I have uh, been on like 15 pills a day and it's kind of... Uh, bad to see that, you know, that's the way pharmaceuticals are going, you know, trying to make some money off of uh, people who are really at their will, you know. So um, that's why I try to inform people of a, a better way to do it and, uh, you know, a simple change in adding more vegetables or fruits to your diet can assist your body into uh, maintaining its health or regaining its health. And um, right now, uh, what I'm doing is actually, uh, the name of my company is Raw Food, the number four, uh, excuse me, Raw Food Prep, the number four life. And you can look me up on Facebook. There's a Facebook page there where I'll uh, post some different easy to make recipes that you can do with your family or your kids to get them started into eating healthy instead of, you know, always going to McDonald's and stuff like that. I remember when you were first diagnosed and I came to visit and you were like barely moving. It seemed like it took all your effort just to walk across the room and then you had a, a, a dinner, a celebration uh, shortly after the 10 days and you were literally just jumping around the house and I was like, oh my God, what's up? Yeah, that's a uh, testimony to uh, the process that I went through with uh, the Living Foods Institute in Atlanta. Is they address the whole person, the body, the soul, and the spirit, you know, and get you into the right frame of mind to kind of help your body heal itself. Instead of getting all bent out on your diagnosis, per se, they want you to uh, see yourself already as whole and uh, healthy. And that way you can focus on that goal instead of bringing up, you know, all the negativity with the diagnosis that you got from a doctor. And that three-part or four-part uh, method is what you do with your clients as well? Yes, uh, basically I uh, first give them some information about nutrition. I'm not a nutritionist, but I am a chef and I'm a certified raw food educator. So uh, I tell them on, you know, instruct them on how to increase their plant intake during the day. And it could be as simple as, you know, just bringing a salad for lunch instead of going out to eat for lunch. You bring your own salad and that way you can kind of control your portion as well as what's going into it. And I give them some brief, you know, recipes on how to like make their own salad dressing instead of buying salad dressing from the store. 
And that seems to uh, give them something to start with, you know, something basic and easy to do. And like I said, if you include your kids into the process, then they'll get that uh, attitude of wanting to eat healthy as well, you know, during their lifetime. Why is it important to make your salad dresses versus salad dressing versus buying it out of the store? Well, with uh, store-bought products, if you read the labels, you're going to see these words that you can barely pronounce. And you know that if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not going to be good or healthy or organic for your body to kind of metabolize and make use of. So more than likely it'll go to fat, you know, if it doesn't know what to do with it. If it can't eliminate it, it'll just put it in a fat cell, you know, and you'll be storing that for a while until you can kind of release that. And um, it's always good to know what you're putting in your body temple because nowadays even the FDA you can't really trust the FDA to be 100% uh, sure of what's going on with our food supply. And if you're also aware of some of the uh, trends in the meat production and poultry uh, industries, uh, you may want to think twice about eating meat at all. <laughs> yeah, so uh, there's a lot to learn. And like I said, you don't have to know it all to begin. You just take one easy step. You don't have to see the end of the staircase to just take that one step and say, hey, I want to take control of my uh, health by eating properly and giving the body, you know, nourishment that it can actually use. So I do a lot of, um, I do some smoothies and juices and a lot of salads. <laughs> yeah. So when you started the 10-day program eight years ago, Wow, in 2010, you said, yeah. right? Right. So, when you started that 10-day program, did you um, did you believe that it was going to work? Did you hope it was going to work? Or were you like, man, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired? At first, I didn't know what to expect, but I knew I had to do something, and it came at a point in my life where. I was on short-term disability and that was about to run out and I would have to go back to work or, uh, you know, do something. And I know I couldn't go back to work on all of these opioids they had me on. They had me on morphine and stuff like that. So I couldn't really function under those kind of conditions. So I did go to the class. I was able to negotiate a price uh, with Jane. And uh, she's uh, the manager over there. She's uh, very good at getting you know people the support that they need to uh, make their body you know whole again. So um, I was able to go there and you know just uh, like I said, they address the whole person, not just the physical part or the nutrition side. They also get into the way you think and. After you know, going through a couple of classes and with them on stinking thinking, you know, you can understand as to why you're not healing yourself because you're always focusing on the negative instead of the positive. So once I got that out of the way, it was kind of easy to let the universe uh, do the rest. You know, basically, you just had to have faith or understanding that you're uh, your spiritual being on this earth plane having a human experience and sickness is one of those experiences that some people have to go through to gain, gain a greater uh, spiritual understanding so it actually helped me because uh, when I first got in you know the diagnosis you know I could be saying why me and all this other stuff but instead I took the uh, perspective of saying what am I supposed to learn from this and how can I you know, be of service to humanity? And that made a whole difference there, uh, you know, with the perspective that you're going into a diagnosis or any kind of treatment with, that you know is here, it's given to you because you need to learn some kind of lesson and that way you can share it with humanity and other people going through the same thing you're going through. So. Uh, it was a really good learning experience. It's kind of like a wake-up call, basically, because uh, right now I'm uh, 59, and 
I know I'm almost halfway done here, so I need to really get on the stick and you know do what I'm supposed to do here uh, on this airplane. So I'm I'm uh, gaining a lot of knowledge in a short period of time, and it's been uh, it's been exciting. You look extremely healthy. <laughs> Thank you, you look like you know that C word never touched your body. Right. right. So the process um, with the food it involves detoxing. Correct. Can you explain what detoxing is? Well, detoxing is basically getting your body to a point where it's going to release all the toxins that you've built up over the years, you know, eating uh, what they call a standard American diet, a sad diet. So your body's got all these toxins and uh, stuff built up, like I said, if it doesn't know how to process it and it doesn't eliminate it, it'll go to the fat cell. So once you get on a healthy eating regimen your body's going to release all these toxins and stuff and you you may go through what they call a healing crisis which is where you really get sicker before you get better and uh, some people have to go through it and some people don't it just depends on what stage your body's at at the time you decide to uh, you know make a move to the positive direction and try to help yourself heal so uh, Detoxing is that period of time where your body's releasing most of its toxicity and you know it'll be able to better absorb the nutrition from uh, the better or healthier diet that you're on at the moment. Is detoxing, do you just do that once? How often? Well, you can do it. Uh, it depends on your uh, conviction, like I said. Uh, some people do it yearly just as a spiritual practice as well. It's for like fasting or uh, the uh, lemon and cayenne pepper kind of diet some people go on with the honey. And uh, basically that's just to uh, give your digestive tract a break from eating a lot of red meats and you know stuff that's gonna take a while to digest and uh, be absorbed by the system. So uh, detoxing gives your body a break where it'll kind of have the chance to clean up whatever's in your system at the moment and release it and then, you know, get back on to eating a healthy uh, way of life. Do you speak with a lot of people that have cancer in, in their body or? Well, at the moment, I, um, I want to focus on people with cancer who have been diagnosed and help them get past any kind of issues, mental or, uh, you know, dietary, where it can support them and to, you know, allowing the body to kind of assist whatever treatment they're going through. Because a lot of people aren't really into the holistic uh, medicine at the moment, but uh, if they do change their diet, they'll notice that their treatment with Western medicine is going to be a lot easier. And, you know, you won't retain a lot of the... Uh, chemicals that they're putting in your body. There's a, uh, a train of thought that you cancer cannot be cured and you must stay on certain medications for the rest of your life for you to stay in remission. What do you say to that? Well, I say that you're a spiritual being, you're one with God and there is no disease in God so once you clear up your thinking you realize that you know diagnosis is just something someone said and you can't really well you can take their word for it well, I guess you got to take their word for it if they're you know in the hospital or something like that but you do have the power to heal yourself and once you realize that you are a powerful being you can uh, you can almost instantaneously uh, go into remission. Like I said, it's all about the way you think about something. You can kind of judge it like good or bad, but nothing's really good or bad. It's just an experience, and it's here to teach you something. I've heard say that uh, cancer is um, the accumulation of unresolved traumas or unresolved issues. How, how do you relate that statement to what you actually experienced? 
Well, I can say that um, during that process where I was going through treatment and stuff, it kind of um, went through my mind as to how I got this. And I would attribute it mostly to my diet. I was eating a lot of barbecue and, you know, <laughs> red meats on the grill and, you know, that's basically, uh, the nurse told me that's what's, you know, killing you, all this red meat that you're eating. And I said, okay, well, <laughs> I'll definitely look into that. And, um, but also the, uh, there is an emotional side. So if you are bottling up a lot of anger or hatred towards someone else, then, um, I would, I would suggest or recommend that you forgive them, not for their sake, but for your own sake. Because um, holding this in your, in your system can make you have some kind of physiological response and it could like stress your, uh, your system out to the point where you can develop cancer or some kind of ailment. And it, you know, it has been uh, determined that different uh, emotions uh, when bottled up or stored in the body will affect certain organs more than others. So, uh, yeah, I think it's possible if you're, you know, you have a lot of stress going on or you have some kind of unresolved issue with a family member or a friend and you're just keeping it all to yourself, then that could affect your health. Now, I know people watching this are going to be like, you want me to give up my barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy, man? Well, I would say everything in moderation, basically. You know, I'm not 100% vegan. But I do uh, kind of have my plate set up where there's more green stuff on there than red stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's good to know because we have to find our balance in it, exactly. right? Because we can't be too extreme this way or too extreme that way. Yeah, you'd be setting yourself up for failure if you try to be on a strict diet, you know, because diets don't really work. Uh, basically when you find something that works for you because everybody's going to be different it's bio individuality where what may work for you may not work for someone else so you got to kind of take charge of your health and and kind of realize you know what your body's telling you you know you got to be in tune with your intuition and you know you just know your body and you know if you feel an ache over here then what's going on and what's causing it and uh, I would also recommend that people get into the practice of spending some quiet time daily, you know, to kind of quiet your mind and just don't think of anything. It could be a meditative practice or it could just be sitting still for a minute, uh, being disconnected from all the electronics and stuff like that where you can just take time to uh, listen to the perfect sound of silence and, you know, that way, if you pose a question to yourself, to your higher self, and that quietness, you'll get a response. You brought up electronics. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to us about that. Well, if you work in front of a computer daily, then you're getting exposed to a lot of what they call EMF, which is electromotive forces. And, you know, you can't feel them per se, but they are going through your body is sort of like the um, short wave radios, uh, even uh, radio signals from uh, the stations that you listen to daily. That's constantly uh, bombarding your cells and stuff with uh, electromotive force. And uh, this really can kind of exacerbate uh, any kind of issues you may have going at the time. And uh, there was a uh, a study where these two ladies, I believe in France, who were really sensitive to uh, the EMFs in their area, and they had to actually live in a cave to be shielded from all of that stuff to, uh, you know, live comfortably. But uh, yeah, we're all, all being uh, polluted. We're in a polluted environment right now. The air is polluted, the water is polluted, you know, and it's kind of hard to, uh, say that you know you're going to be in a pristine environment but you do the best you can and uh, 
by giving yourself uh, organic rather than re regular uh, vegetables that may have been sprayed with pesticides. And when you wash your vegetables, you're not washing that stuff off. It's still in the uh, vegetable itself. So if you can afford it, I would always recommend to do organic when possible. But you know, there's a, there's a list that you can actually download from the web called the Dirty Dozen, and it'll tell you exactly which fruits and vegetables are more highly sprayed with pesticides than others, and you know which could be safe to eat. You know, if you have a peel on it, then you're more than likely safe to eat that uh, vegetable without you know having too much concern about pesticides. So this worldwide. Uh, wellness movement is about uh, providing helpful information to individuals in a language that can be easily understood and you've done such an excellent job with that telling your your victory over the C word right yes. is there any additional suggestions advice recommendations that you would make to people to continue to live or to start a healthier lifestyle well I uh, yeah definitely uh, get in tune with your intuition and your higher self that's basically what I'm saying your spirit get it to know your spirit it will always guide you the right way and uh, if you follow that you know you shouldn't have any problem in life because you're here for a reason, and once you realize what that reason is, then you can pursue that and live a uh, productive as well as uh, thriving life. Well, thank you, Mr. Wadley. You have been such uh, an incredible inspiration, and I want people to understand that this man you see before you just eight years ago was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer and he is just looking so healthy and radiant and brilliant. So thank you so much. Thankful and grateful to be here. Namaste. particular bowl is infused with frankincense so it's called an alchemist uh, singing bowl crystal singing bowl <clears throat> vibration goes through your body at the cellular level which will uh, assist in healing anything that's going on with you and uh, also have like too many forks that uh, do the same thing and this is a part of your healing ritual yes uh, basically I was using the meditation you know uh, preparing a group for meditation or something like that this will uh, 
the frequency vibration of you know kind of uplift you.